you know we don't usually pick up hitchhikers. But I'm gonna go with my instinct on this one. Settle up, partner. This morning VI Roadshow made the trek from Austin East to College Station and now we're here at Texas A&M University and in the College of Engineering and um, we're going to do some interviews and check things out. Yeah, today we're going to visit uh, a girl named uh, Dr. Karen butler Purry. She works in the Power Systems Lab. Um, we'll have her explain what that, what that actually is so that I don't butcher it and while we're here we'll probably uh, try to talk to some Aggies and see what's going on in College Station as well. So. Here we go. So we're downstairs now uh, in Dr. Butler Purry's lab, um, and she's going to kind of take us through what her application is doing. I think that the funniest part about this is that behind me, Hi. one of her undergraduate students, Derek, okay. is on the phone with NI Support. Again, I'll just introduce Dr. Uh, Butler Purry here, and she can just kind of go through right. her application. Okay. Um, as I was mentioning, this is our Power Systems Automation Laboratory, and. Over the past few years, we've developed yes, um, a um, power system controller that essentially reroutes power automatically in a power system. And so what we want to do is now I, I guess, essentially um, study and st I mean, develop a prototype using this product uh, to study whether the, and verify yes, the, um, the controller. Okay, so this is sort of a block diagram right, so of our eventual system that we'd like to build. And so what we have is we will take a power system and um, compile it as a DLL. It's written in MATLAB Simulink, right. and it will essentially use the National Instruments ETS product and run on a host computer. And um, we will actually measure analog signals through the NI DAC. Um, there's two cards in here. Okay. And the analog signal will go through an analog module, input module, and um, be read by the CRIO system. And then the logic for the controller is programmed on this CRIO controller. And essentially it will look at measurements and if you um, essentially have exceeded a threshold that says there's a problem, then it generates digital signals through the NI digital output modules and sends that through the NI DAC card uh, to the simulation system and changes the status of the switches because those are digital uh, signals. And so we're just looking at the VI on this computer and comparing it to the scope and they should be the same. Okay. So one of these VIs that we're seeing, I believe, is actually targeted to the, so like you, if you can see, it's probably kind of hard, but you can see that this is actually targeted and running on the, the Compact Rio itself. All right. So then, you know, again, really quickly, so again, the idea here, I think, is we're trying to do some real rapid prototyping. And instead of building, writing a bunch of custom code and creating a bunch of custom hardware for their control system, they can, they can kind of use the, the Compact Rio and the sort of the FPGA, the combination of the FPGA and the RT operating system to just do stuff much more quickly and kind of refine that control system before they go and, and spend a whole bunch of money uh, building that. So very cool. Thanks a lot yes. for talking to us.
time for another shameless plug. I can't believe how big this Rickard's monster burrito is. <laughs> <laughs>